I'm reviewing Bulgarian Country Bowl again to talk about the history of Germany. I've already reviewed his Country Bowl's Modern History of Russia video. Now it's time to hit his most popular video, the one with Germany. Because there's actually a lot to break down here. It's actually one of the most famous Country Bowl videos of all time on YouTube with 10 million views. So this dude is a legend. Definitely go subscribe. So I've obviously gone over the history of Germany many times on this channel before. But this is the Country Bowl version of it. And there's a lot of little details that people miss. So boom, instantly right there, we have the Empire of Germany. And them taking this from France, I believe is a reference to Alice... Uh, uh, Lor Lorraine, is that how you say that? Well, I mean, now it has a different name, of course. But yeah, they ate this up, and this is currently what that German country ball looks like in their actual borders, extending all the way out east to modern-day Poland territory right now. And just for good measure, they put the hat on as well. So we're probably going to get into World War I and all the details of that. So they're going to grab a little boat and begin. Okay, so now we have the imperialization of Africa. This is a very good map. Keep in mind this map. They're going to lose a lot of this after WW1. This is going to go to Portugal. This is the UK. Yeah, but we're building up into the Great War. Okay, so after they return, they have they had boats before. Now they're entering into China territory. And they don't look very happy. They're, they're going to do some... Yeah, I mean, everyone at this time was bullying Qing China. Hey, we have the flag back there too. I'm so sorry. So going to take a little bite out of that. They have their very own, like, little Hong Kong or Macau, Portugal, you know, and Hong Kong, the British. Uh, we have France with uh, Morocco. And uh, Germany, I guess, was like, hey, you're going to want to give that up. Germany is not very happy that France did not do that. We have Germany now talking to Austria-Hungary. They might even start in a little alliance. Ooh, okay. Uh, now, Italy is going to be... Italy has the alliance. Oh, okay, so this is where a lot of the drama takes place. Especially because Italy didn't actually pick a side initially, and then they ended up going with the Entente, not joining these central powers, which was what Germany was a part of. So they have a little friendship going on. Now, the Ottomans might want to... Okay, we have the uh, Serb guy shooting... Uh, yeah, Franz here. The Archduke Franz Ferdinand. He's been oofed. Now, Austria is really not happy that their Archduke got oofed by this Serbian. So now uh, the Austrians want to start bullying Serbia, but then there was an alliance with Russia, and then the Russians had an alliance with France, and then we had all these yeah, chains of alliances. We're already jumping into WW1. I just love all the little details in this video that can go over people's heads. Oh, I thought, I didn't even know what that ball was for a second. I didn't realize that was a German ball. I couldn't tell until I saw the red at the, at the bottom. We have plan B. We might have, might have been talking about the Christmas Day truce, which is a big topic right now on, on YouTube, on History YouTube. Christmas is always coming up. Uh, okay, they're going to go and use Belgium once again. So this is the first time they tried to go around Belgium. And that did not make the UK too happy. Uh, this time, the yeah, the front was just going to kind of stay right there. But in the sequel, just wait. Because that, that's going to get real crazy with Germany and Belgium and France. Uh, we have uh, trench warfare going on. They're both just building up trenches. That's why those front lines were not going to really move that much. We have a little bit of spicy wind that they're introducing to the formula. And uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's going to be a pretty brutal. This is part of the reason why a lot of people say WW1 would have actually been a worse war to fight in than WW2. Like, even if you ended up surviving, your life afterwards would not be very good. A lot of people didn't make it out of that, like, completely normal. So, obviously, the U.S. hasn't started joining yet. We still have so much of German history to go over. So the ball's rolling on in. I mean, they're sliding in. I love how the balls just kind of slide. The surface, there's no friction. It's like it's like a science class. Um, remove... What is that What is that formula? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Russia, <laughs> Russia is now fighting in the east. And Russia is going to be dealing with some communism. We actually saw that in the other video. Uh, we're asking... Yeah, Germany's asking Italy to help. Italy's like, nah, we're going to help France instead. Uh, yes, but we do have the Ottomans. Hey, you have the Ottomans. Uh, Japan is going to also join the Entente, which is pretty interesting because they ended up switching sides for the second sequel here. Uh, a lot of fighting in the east. We have Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, I, I wish, I mean, there was no real reason to get into it, but the Balkan fighting happening before 1914 was really interesting. I know we're talking about the history of Germany, though. Russia, like an egg, a cracked egg, uh, gave birth to some new countries like Poland. Here we go. So Germany's going to try to get Mexico to join in on WW1 through the Zimmerman letter, but that was going to get uh, yeah, intercepted by the UK. Very interesting if, I mean, I've seen a lot of different theories, even if the UK, if the UK didn't intercept that note, it's very unlikely Mexico would have really done anything in the first place. I mean, I think the USA would have found a way to probably join in at the end of the day, but this was like a perfect reason to be like, oh, okay, well, yep, now, yep. So now the USA is real angry. They're going to join in. 
Germany's gonna have this. They're, they're gonna have a little bit of problems now, you could say. Uh, we have a yeah through Greece the front, and then the Ottomans are gonna collapse. Bulgaria is done. The Ottomans have collapsed. There's gonna be Ottomans gonna turn into Turkey, and the Austro-Hungarians are gonna just turn into a bunch of chaos. The Treaty of Versailles, a lot of bad things that Germany's not gonna like. Army can only stay at 100,000 men, no aviation. They're gonna lose territory. They have to pay huge reparations. They're gonna demilitarize the Rhineland, and this is going to make Germany very upset. This is when they start their huge villain arc. Uh, well, we actually we have to talk about the Weimar Republic a little bit here, too. So Poland's gonna get that territory in the east. We, they lost the land that they made a reference to in the very beginning. Denmark, oh, Denmark and Belgium. I actually didn't even realize that. The economy goes down. Government goes down. <laughs> They're crying. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, I'm so glad that we're not using the no-no German flag. Okay. Uh, that's probably why this video was able to get 10 million views. If there was no-no German flag on that, that could have been very bad. So they're going to remilitarize the Rhineland. So we have just flashed forward like 15 years in history. Well, I mean, slowly. But uh, we also have the beginning of the Luftwaffe, the, the waffles. I don't know why I like to call it that. Uh, they are going to Auschwitz, Austria. Germany's gotten a little bit bigger. Uh, France and the UK are going to say, do not take the sedate land from Czechia. And they're going to say, don't worry about it. And then they're going to do it anyways. This is when Neville Chamberlain is going to go back with the newspaper like, we have peace in our time. Uh, so Czechia is now gone, and there's like a puppet Slovakia. Yep, you, there we go. We have a little, it look like a little pet. This is, I love the border updates. Like that's, I think that, that separates this video from other country ball videos. Like, I don't know. I'm just like a weird map nerd. So I, I need to see what the borders are looking like. So we have like a really nice, like round kind of ball Germany. I like how like the German borders at this time pretty much mirror like a country ball in a way. It's very weirdly circular. They're going to go to Lithuania and I'm actually not sure what this is all about. Uh, they're going to ask for, oh, a piece of Lithuania. Okay. That's a very small Reverends that I didn't realize, we have the Axis coming together. Italy, of course, uh, Imperial Japan. Now, this is a reference to the uh, non-aggression pact between the Nona Germans and the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union, they look like they look pretty reluctant to sign it, but they they did it anyways. And then they're going to divide up Poland. Of course, at this time, the Soviet Union didn't like fully trust the Nona Germans. Still, there was always going to be a little bit of suspicion, which obviously, rightfully so, because we're going to see like the Germans backstab them at some point. So we're going to see Poland just get absolutely like demolished here, which I don't really know what else they could have done. I mean, they're fighting. This is. This is why in Hearts of Iron 4 this is like one of the craziest achievements, just to survive this onslaught between the G Germans in the West and then the Soviets in the East. Um, I mean, and I like the I like love the action there. This, the, the Soviets coming in, and yeah, there's there's really not a whole lot they can do, so they're gonna get split up. They're both happy. So now Denmark and Norway are next on the chopping block. And Denmark lasts, what is it, six hours? I believe Denmark lasts a total of six hours against the Nona Germans. Uh, then we go through, they're trying to move around the Maginot Line, through the Ardane Forest. And this is when we're going to see a little bit of Dunkirk action. So this is them actually moving through that forest. I love that. Um, so I have seen like some reports saying that like, uh, you know, France wasn't expecting that, but then also like the, the whole point of the Maginot line at the same time was for them to be forced to go that way. Like France was expecting this. They just weren't expecting to this extent. I, I, I've just seen a lot of different people argue different stuff about it. And so this is when Dunkirk happens. If you've seen the movie, okay, boom, France is left behind and Paris falls. They have all of France. France becomes Vicky, Vichy, France. A uh, little bit of fighting in Africa. Italy's not handling that too well. Oh, so Italy's already going to Germany. I thought it was usually to Greece. What are they going to say? Oh, so uh, I guess that is the reference. I see. We just showed um, Africa first. So we have to have the Germans go all the way through the Balkans. We have a couple people joining the Axis. We have Croatia going to pop out of Yugoslavia. And uh, boom, they're going to get taken out. No reference to Croatia. Uh, we have Greece going into Albania, but yep, now they're, yeah, yeah, now it's just not gonna work. Okay, so boom, help Italy get a hold of Greece, and now is about the time we're gonna go ahead and decide. Yeah, well, maybe we should talk attack the Soviet Union. Oh, oh, let's first finish up in the African front. 
push the uh, British out of Egypt and really just have the British on their heels. Oh, this is when they split. Okay, so they took the non-aggression pack, tore it in half, decided this, decided, hey, you know what? We're going to go ahead and invade the Soviet Union. And this was uh, pretty much the greatest mistake of all time. I've said that like so many times in the past before too. They're going to push the Soviets out of the Baltic states. Um, of course, there was no reference to the Winter War, but uh, the Soviets were fighting Finland a little bit. Now they're fighting Finland, I think, again. Um, the winter is coming. It's very cold. We're going to have huge sieges on Stalingrad. I don't know if we're going to get to that point yet. Uh, yeah, you can clearly tell by the country ball appearance that they are not ready for this winter. I love how the uh, Soviets are just, their, their ball at least, is just naked out there. They don't need any clothes for the winter. Like, this is their natural habitat. The German balls still need a helmet. <laughs> the Soviets, however, do not. I never get tired of, like, looking at images or animations showing, like, the chaos of the Eastern Front. There was just so much going on over there. So the Soviets with their tanks... Not like amazing tanks, but man, they produced a lot of them. And uh, there was just, just boom, they overwhelmed the Germans. I'm surprised we haven't seen any Germans, like completely frozen, like German frozen animations. Tanks gone, Germans also gone. And they're gonna roll up. There's gonna be some planes as well. We got some Hearts of Iron 4 music. And this is, are we gonna talk about the, well, I'm sure we're gonna talk about D-Day, but we do really need to focus on the Eastern Front against the Soviets. You just have to, I, you know, also, this video shows so many different things. I might have already missed some, uh, some smaller details in, in that moment. Maybe they did talk about it for like a second there. Uh, are, are we gonna, okay, so Germany's gonna get split up. I'm not sure where we, how far we are from that. We've got paratroopers landing. Is this D-Day? It looks like we are back. I think that the British are on continental Europe now. We might even, might even get a reference to the Battle of the Bulge. Okay, this is D-Day. Boom. They have landed in Normandy, France. This is actually a very... That looks like a pretty okay D-Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. Maybe, maybe not as easy. I was going to say, if it was that easy... Oh, we have a little reference to the Canadian ball. I love that. All right. So, Germany has now lost. And uh, Germany's going to get split up. And they're going to have a tough time during the Cold War because, uh, let's see what this animation looks like. Yeah, they, they were going to pay, uh, so is everyone just going to, like, get a little piece of chocolate? Yeah. I love that. We have an Eastern German ball. You're coming home with daddy. And, uh, everyone is actually going to, oh, okay, I thought everyone, because for a moment there, that was the interesting thing. The occupation zones of Germany was very interesting. I always forget the U.S. actually had Bavaria down here. Of course, this was all given to Poland right this way. Well, the Soviets got Kaliningrad. I guess the U.S. did end up taking some ports along the coast. France even got something. Uh, this was some territory that was just, like, free at one point. This looks like a weird flag, like a combined flag between Denmark and France. I wonder why they decided to give it that cross, that Nordic cross. I mean, that was just what it had historically. And we have Berlin that's all divided up, too. Seen a lot of alternative history that shows, like, Saarland if they remained independent. Because, yeah, they just had a brief moment there where they were kind of by themselves. I guess technically occupied by France, but yeah, there's something going on there. So the USSR hanging up their flag, and now we have a divided Germany and a lot of chaos during the Cold War. Italy, France, Germany all signing treaties. This is, is this NATO? Oh, the, oh, the beginning of the EU. Uh, East Germany, who's just been kind of... Were they sleeping before that? Uh, so they're a part of the Warsaw Pact. Wait, oh, I like that little reference there. Ah, uh, this is Czechia, uh, not a second secret Poland. <laughs> I did see a little bit of the blue, uh, triangle in the corner. So the Berlin Wall is going up around East Germany. They're like, stay out. We have the UN coming together. And instantly, when, like, transport, like, flash forward, like, 50 years later, I like how the USSR gave them the hammer. Okay, so you can go ahead and just break down the wall. And uh, and they have finally tore down the wall. And Germany is just kind of coming together. Boom, merged together like that. Like some cells. I like it. And still to this day, welcome to the EU. I love, like still to this day, there's still pretty interesting divide in Germany. I mean, they were divided for so long. You can still see it on along the lines. What, wait, what is this? Oh, top world economies. There's Germany. Still very much a powerhouse. And they have all the monies. 
All the EU monies, even with the UK leaving. Oh, Germany's sad. They're all alone. So that was reference to Bre Brexit and uh, Germany and the European Union. Again, looking a little depressed. I love country ball videos because they're silent and there's just so much to interpret. Like if I was a history teacher, this is really all I'd assign the class to watch. This is kind of the theme of their modern history. Germany tries to do anything. Britain, no. Literally every time. Like I said, definitely go subscribe to Bulgarian country ball. And if you like some of your own country balls, we actually talked about Japan. I do have these available on makeshift.com. And big thanks to my patrons. Drew, I'm stalking you and we'll kidnap you December 27th, 2022. DJ McSkillet. Oh, fat Norwal. Drew's Argentinian $20 grandpa. $20 is a lot Drew. Wild Bring thing. back Evan. Bowling. Price. Good old Ryan, Isaac Kilgore is dead. Noah Gamer, Bio, Bass, All 69, Patrick, Fresh, Alsh, Robert, Anime, Rye, the Pie. Scottish Tokyo, the Polish, the Mexican, the Wicked, Hamster, and why am I doing this?